Uh, hi, Senator. Kevin Kostar of the R Street Institute, a think tank a few blocks from here. You mentioned the 53 consecutive years that the NDAA has uh, been passed and been passed in a timely fashion. That's a really remarkable uh, governance achievement. And I wonder, what accounts for that? That's not the way the rest of Congress tends to work. Are there factors about how the committee conducts its business or, or what? I think two impulses, one good, one not so good. <laughs> One impulse, of course, is the defense of the country and the uh, many aspects of the authorizing legislation that are really vital, ranging from pay and benefits of the men and women who are serving to major challenges uh, that, that ranging from our defensive capabilities to acquisition, all the things that I described. The other not so uh, laudable impulse is that there's a lot in there for members of the committees. Um, a, a member, a, a, a United States senator or congressman who has significant defense involvement in their state or district naturally gravitate towards the committee. That's understandable and there's nothing wrong with that but sometimes there are many authorizations that have a direct impact on the economy and jobs uh, in their particular district or state. Uh, I have found, and all over the years that I worked with Carl Levin, and now working with Jack Reed also, there's a degree of bipartisanship that is a, a, a legacy that's been handing down, handed down to us. And None of us want to be the first to break that bipartisan uh, m method of, of, of legislating and putting together a defense bill. In the last markup before the bill, it may be on the floor tonight or may not because there is uh, a view by some of the Democrats, I don't know if there's enough, that because of OCO, they don't want to move forward with a defense authorization bill. I don't understand that logic because it seems to me it's a money issue and we're authorizers, but so we'll see this afternoon whether we get 60 votes to, uh, to proceed. But setting that OCO problem aside, we always work in a, in a almost unanimous fashion. There's a few outliers, but overall it's been uh, unanimous and therefore has been able to get through the Senate. Now in all candor, the last couple of years, Senator Reid decided to bring it up at the last minute and we didn't, did not get the full debate and amending that it deserved. I guarantee you if we take it up tonight, we, the end of this week and next week, we will have over 200 amendments that will be considered by the committee either in conference, you know, amongst us, will amendments we can accept without votes, and there will be many amendments that will be voted on as well. And frankly, that's what people expect us to do. And unfortunately, we haven't done a lot of that in the last few years.